Uh, after listening to those harmonies, we're going to have to check when we go outside to make sure the streets aren't paved with gold and there's mansions all around because I think we're already in heaven. Somehow we skipped the second coming. That was amazing. Thank you for leading us to the throne of grace in worship. We finish our series, The Thanksgiving Tree, today. And we've been on a, a journey over the last month or so, each week bringing different kinds of praise and, and thanksgiving and adding them to our tree. And uh, make sure that I'm broadcasting so you get the picture on the screen here. It says we are. Is it coming through? Normally, I'd just keep on going, but today it's going to be kind of important that you see some of the things that are on the screen. So <laughs> there, you know, getting close. If you look closely at that picture, you'll see hidden within the picture where we're headed. <laughs> Not quite the one. Here, let me reset. There we go. All right. Thanksgiving tree. Today, God gives us himself. So last summer, we went down to see the Redwoods. I had been down there when I was a kid and hadn't been back in a, in a long time. So we decided we were going to head down and, and, and take a look at them. Wanted to show Wendy and, and Kaylee Ann what it was like to, to be in the midst of these, these huge trees. Now, how many of you have ever been down to see the Redwoods? All right, the vast majority of you. How many of you have ever tried to get a picture that actually captured the size of the redwoods and failed miserably repeatedly, <laughs> right? <laughs> you just can't quite capture on film exactly, or digital now, uh, exa exactly the, the size and the scope of being there in the midst of those amazing trees. So we were down there driving and, and trying to, to capture the different trees and, and went out in, in Jedediah Smith uh, Park there. And we're just going from place to place. And, and one of the, the local people said, you got to go down to this, this one particular area there in the park. And there's, there's a grove of trees down in there where they actually filmed a scene from Star Wars. So you got to go down there and you got to get in there and see it. So, so we, we looked all over. It was amazing. Just, just amazing driving through these, these trees and, and on these back roads and things. And, and we finally get down in there and we park and we start walking down the trail. And, and the further you get into those trees, the smaller you feel, right? You feel smaller and smaller as these, these just enormous trees just make you feel small. And yet at the same time, as, as you look at the size and the scope and the beauty of these trees, you begin to experience just, just a taste of, of the glory of God. So we're, we're walking down there and, and there's a Ranger, she's taking a group on a tour, and so we, we slow down a little bit to, to listen. But, um, well, some of our crew like to read all the signs and everything on the sign as you go, and others on our crew like to get where they're going and see what there is to see. And so the latter followed the former, and I trailed behind as, as I was catching up with the rest of the group who wanted to get where we were going and, and see what we're going to see. So we're, we're walking out there through, and we get ahead of the ranger and, and her group, and we head out into these, these amazing groves of, of humongous trees. And as we get out further into the trees, we're going along, and, and all of a sudden, off in the distance, I hear a noise. And I'm like, what is that? And we listen a little closer, and, and it gets a little louder, and all of a sudden, you hear this crack and as we listen, there is the sound of breaking limbs. If you've ever heard a tree fall in a forest, it is a distinct sound that you cannot mistake. <laughs> and so you start to hear these, these limbs snapping, and, and all of a sudden there is this crash out in the woods. And, and I'm looking around, and, and all of a sudden you hear some more limbs snapping, and, and you start wondering, how, what's going on? You know, right? How many trees are going to come down in this? So, so we start walking down further and, and trying to figure out what, what happened. And sure enough, we, we get out there a little bit further, and a tree had fallen down the side of the mountain and smacked into another tree, which set it off on, a, on an angle, another course. And, and one of them was a giant redwood that had come down wasn't as big as the other, you know, massive ones in the area, but it was a redwood tree that had come down, and you can actually see in the top right picture the inside of the redwood tree. That's what, what it looked like when it snapped 
in, in pieces. I couldn't believe the amazing red color. I mean, on the outside, you see a little bit of the red, but, but when it snaps and breaks and you see on the inside the red, it, it is just brilliant red in, in color there. And so people were, I was like, okay, where's the ranger? <laughs> and, and people were headed out and they were grabbing pieces. And I was like, well, is, is it legal to take a piece of broken redwood or not? Other people were doing it though. So I figured that's a good excuse. And I followed them out and grabbed a piece. And so that's, that's actually a piece that is somewhere in the United States. Um, anyway, <laughs> used as an illustration to show you guys what, what the inside of a, a redwood tree looks like. <laughs> It was, it was amazing to, to be out there. And, and so we climbed up on another tree and walked on that tree to get back to the path and, and from, you know, wove our way between the trees to come back. And, and I think, you know, it's, it's kind of sad when, when you think about one of these amazing trees coming down early, falling down and, and being broken. But as I, as I thought about it, there's, there's a whole ecosystem that is built up and, and thrives because a tree falls, because a tree dies. As, as you look at this, this fallen tree here, well, there. As you look at that fallen tree, tell me, what do you see? All right, you see someone walking, walking through a, a cutout spot in it, all right? First thing you see is, is this tree alive or dead? most likely dead, right? You can't see the whole thing. There, there are actually some redwoods that fall over and the roots are still enough in the ground that they'll grow sideways and then spring up. But this one here in particular is, is actually dead. But as, as you look at the dead tree, what do you see all over and around it? New life, right? There's new life growing out of the tree. If, if trees didn't fall, you know, if I'm driving and I see a ton of trees down the forest, I'm like, why don't we clean those up, especially living here in North Idaho or on the West Coast, right? Fire, fire hazard, let's, let's get those out. But, but the, the death of a tree actually is what is required for new life to spring forth. And as you look at this tree, you can see ferns growing out of the side, other plants growing a little further, even, even other trees starting to grow out of the side of this tree. And as, as you look and you study about the, the ecosystems that trees grow in, dead trees provide homes for woodpeckers and all sorts of other birds and living creatures, right? And as, as the tree falls and bacteria and, and, and fungus begin to break it down, it, it then puts nutrients in the soil, which allows other plants and other trees to grow up in its place. The death of one tree provides a springboard for the life of innumerable plants and animals. A tree comes crashing down. The end of one thing, but the beginning of others. The giving tree. The giving tree. This, this book, is, as we read through it, I want you today, as we go through, to think of the parallels between this story and Christ. And I don't know if the author had it intended or not, but as, as you read through, just, just as we go through, start, start to think, what are the parallels between this story that we've been journeying through and what Christ is and who he is and, and what he does for us? Once there was a tree, and she loved a little boy, and every day the boy would come, and he would gather her leaves and make them into crowns and play king of the forest. He would climb up her trunk and swing from her branches and eat apples. And they would play hide and go seek. And when he was tired, he would sleep in her shade. And the boy loved the tree very much. And the tree was happy. But time went by and the boy grew older and the tree was often alone. Then one day the boy came to the tree and the tree said, come boy, come and climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and eat apples and play in my shade and be happy. I am too big to climb and play, said the boy. I want to buy things and have fun. I want some money. Can you give me some money? I'm sorry, said the tree, but I have no money. I only have leaves and apples. Take my apples, boy, and sell them in the city. Then you will have money and you will be happy. So the boy climbed up the tree and gathered her apples and carried them away, and the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time, and the tree was sad. And then one day the boy came back, and the tree shook with joy, and she said, Come, boy, climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and be happy. I am too busy to climb trees, said the boy. 
I want a house to keep me warm, he said. I want a wife and I want children, so I need a house. Can you give me a house? I have no house, said the tree. The forest is my home. But you may cut off my branches and build a house. Then you will be happy. And so the boy cut off her branches and carried them away to build his house. And the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time. And when he came back, the tree was so happy she could hardly speak. Come, boy, she whispered, come and play. I am too old and sad to play, said the boy. I want a boat that will take me far away from here. Can you give me a boat? Cut down my trunk and make a boat, said the tree. Then you can sail away and be happy. And so the boy cut down her trunk and made a boat and sailed away. And the tree was happy, but not really. And after a long time, the boy came back again. I am sorry, boy, said the tree, but I have nothing left to give you. My apples are gone. My teeth are too weak for apples, said the boy. My branches are gone, said the tree. You cannot swing on them. I am too old to swing on branches, said the boy. My trunk is gone, said the tree. You cannot climb. I am too tired to climb, said the boy. I am sorry, sighed the tree. I wish that I could give you something, but I have nothing left. I am just an old stump. I am sorry. I don't need very much now, said the boy. Just a quiet place to sit and rest. I am very tired. Well, said the tree, straightening herself up as much as she could. Well, an old stump is good for sitting and resting. Come, boy, sit down, sit down and rest. And the boy did. And the tree was happy. The end. As I read this story, it's kind of sad. <laughs> but it illustrates so much our experience with God. When, when we first come to God, we are thrilled with all the gifts he gives us, all the things he gives us, and, and there is joy and there is happiness in that moment as, as God embraces us. <laughs> But as time goes by, we often tend to drift. We get wrapped up in our own things, in our own lives, in our own worries, and in, in what we are all caught up in. And we head off using the blessings of God to take us away from God. And yet God never stops reaching out to us, never stops reaching towards us, never stops trying to, to draw us back to himself. So much so that he comes down to this earth and he becomes a human being like one of us. And as the tree is cut down and all that's left is a stump, so our God comes and hangs on a tree and he himself is cut down. And he says, here is my one last invitation for you. I've given you every gift I have to offer. I've given you everything I have to give to you. So I want you to come to my cross. Come to the place where I was cut down and cut off, and I want you to find rest for your soul. I want you to come there, and I want you to find joy in the freedom of salvation that I give to you. I want you to come, and I want you to sit there at the cross, as the boy did with the tree, once again entering into relationship with myself. I want you to find there the infinite gift of my grace, the infinite joy of a relationship with me, the infinite peace of knowing that your God is at peace with you, that your God embraces you, that he welcomes you into the family. Despite our selfishness, despite the fact that we run away from him, despite the fact that we forget about him and we, we celebrate his blessings while leaving him behind, he comes to us once again and he says, I want to embrace you. I want you to, to be drawn back and find peace and rest for your souls in me. I want the original goal of a, a personal relationship between the two of us to be the final ending spot. And so today, we come to the cross. We come to the cross to meet our Savior. We're going to do communion a little different today. Instead of, instead of remaining in our seats together, today I want to invite you to come to the cross. 
I want you to, to invite you, as, as the little boy did, to come back and, and sit at the cross. I want to invite you to come and bring your burdens and lay them at the cross. Whatever your burdens are. Now, we're, we're going to have the deaconess to dismiss. And, and actually, those in the balcony, you go ahead and if you want to start making your way down and around the outside and coming up, you're welcome to. If, if you have your rocks that you got as you came in, we're going to bring our burdens. And instead of leaves of Thanksgiving today, we're going to lay our burdens at the foot of the cross, the tree that has been transformed into a cross of Thanksgiving. And then, so, so those in the balcony, feel free to wait, make your way down. As, as you come, lay your burdens at the cross and I want you to picture in your mind just God embracing you, drawing you to himself, taking your burden away. And then you can go to the tables on either side and, and take the emblems of that relationship. Take the emblems of that sacrifice that, that gave you and I that peace and that freedom, full and free, and receive them as it were from the cross and then take them back to your seats. The deaconesses will dismiss you. You can go ahead and come right down the middle aisle, make your way to the cross. If you don't have a burden or a rock, there's a bucket of them here you can pick up. For those of you who are carefree and don't have a worry in the world, <laughs> feel free to pick up your burden <laughs> and, and lay them at the cross here. And then take the gift that God gives you full and free back to your seats, and then we will partake in the emblems all together. I want to go ahead and invite you to, to make your way down now. And then the deaconess, de deaconesses will dismiss you from back to front. If you do need assistance, there will be deacons here at the front to assist you in getting on and off the platform. Again, if, if you can't make it onto the platform, that's fine. You can receive, a de a elder will bring your, your emblems down to the front and, and hand it to you. Feel free to come up and as, as the music plays, I just want you to picture this God, this God who gave everything to embrace you in his love.
there's anybody who didn't get any, just raise your hand and the elders will make sure you get some. You know, it's over, over here in the back on the left side. Yeah, back, back left over here. It's, it's really easy to come lay a rock at the cross. It's a lot harder to walk away and leave your burdens at the cross. We tend to carry them with us. We come to God and we, we give him our problems and then we lay hold of them and walk away with them. Some of the symbolism today is hopefully just being able to, to see ourselves coming to the cross and actually leaving our burdens there. Leaving with the sense of freedom, the sense of joy, that we truly are forgiven, that our guilt, our sins have been taken care of. We leave them behind and we trust fully in Christ, that he draws us to himself, that, that the thing he seeks above all others is for you and I to simply sit down and rest in his grace, to trust fully in that, in that relationship, in that freedom of, of salvation that he gives us. So we invite you into that experience this morning. In 1 Corinthians, Paul gives us some words that, that describe the meaning of this moment. And in a second or two, the words will show up for you on the, on the screen. As, as they were coming together, they had forgotten the meaning of this service they had forgotten the, the, the main point of it, <laughs> that Jesus was getting ready to go away. He was getting ready to separate himself physically from them, and he wanted them to have a reminder, a reminder that God Almighty is with us. Even though we can't see him, even though we can't touch him, that he is here, that he will never leave us or forsake us. He wants us to have a, a visible reminder of, of the feast that is coming on that day. Now, for those of you, if this is your first communion, you, you may have been all excited about it, and you get one little wafer and one little swig of juice, and it doesn't seem like that much. It's, it's not. It's just a down payment on the grand and glorious feast that is coming on that ultimate Thanksgiving day in heaven when God spreads the table for us. <laughs> it's just to give us a, a leaping off point, something to take our minds and point them forward to that day when we will be reunited together with Jesus for eternity, physically in his presence never to be separated again. Paul tells us here, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Before Jesus had his disciples take part, he, he prayed a prayer of blessing over the emblems that point us to himself. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we are thankful, we are grateful for this opportunity to lift our minds and, and focus them on you to anticipate that, that morning when you will come and you will take us and, and bring us home to be with you for eternity. In this moment, we ask that you would bless, bless these tokens of your body and of, of your blood, that you would bless each one who, who partakes, who, who tastes them today, that you would send us forth from this place with the assurance, with the knowledge that you are with us, that you embrace us and that you will never let us go. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus took the bread and he said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. And then he took the cup and he said, this is my blood, 
which is poured out for you. Drink of it, all of you. And then, as to not leave them in a state of mourning, the Bible tells us that he led them all in a song as they left the upper room. Let's join together and sing this, this closing song. As we do, lift up your minds and celebrate. This service is to remind us that we are completely washed of our sins, that we leave this place completely free by the blood of Jesus Christ that we have complete and total assurance in our relationship and our salvation in Jesus Christ because he has given it to us as a free and complete gift.
Now may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. As you're leaving, there will be receptacles at either door that you can drop your cups in if you would like. Very nice. Thank you for your help. Oh. <laughs>